to Nat's Knackers Yard. I'll be Nat. That will be my Knackers Yard. And this will be Kit, my daily commute. Uh, the Phaser 600. Calf. Um, a bit of a midweek update. Um, I thought rather than do it staring at stuff, I'll do it while moving. And maybe drop a few pictures in, because it's mostly, I think maybe all exclusively, paint. So let's go. Uh, if kit sounds a bit noisy, this is choked fully on because it is pretty nippy. Uh, and I'll just hoik it around here and get onto the main road before I start talking too much balls. Uh, just so I concentrate. Because it is quite cold, a little bit icy. But what I certainly want to be doing is watching out for the old manhole covers that are wet, cold and slippy first thing in the morning. Um, I'm trying to avoid the urge of shouting because I know that that screws up this little uh, cheapy mic that I've got. Um, right, so, where are we then? So, uh, last, um, <laughs> last episode, <laughs> last upload, uh, was pretty much painting the Thundercat panels uh, in very cold conditions, it has to be said, but um, really me learning the way with my um, with my airbrush, with my paint gun. Um, and I am still learning, you know, this is a, a learning experience for me. Um, I very rarely do how-to videos, uh, I don't think I'm anywhere near experienced enough to do that. Um, what I do do is uh, film what I'm doing and hopefully people can learn from my mistakes, and there are plenty. Um, the end result from the last one was, yeah, I had paint on stuff, not a problem. Now, it wasn't my first attempt at painting a base coat colour with um, with my airbrush. I did do a, like a, a, an old tank um, as a tester and polished it up from there, and it turned out okay, actually. So my intent was, uh, bearing in mind that the Thundercat is going to be my bike, um, the intent was... Um, not to lacquer because I didn't on the tank and I got away from it I got away from it got away with it um, that said the tank is a nice well it's rounder than this it's like an old peanut tank I suppose um, so I thought I'd give it a go so as I explained at the back of the last video I thought what I would do is um, you know my first attack would be at the seat cowling uh, which I've bought it's not OEM it's a homemade someone made it in a garage jobby uh, it's a relatively regular shape and um, worst case scenario if I cock it up I just either paint it again I won't use it um, and that's exactly what I did uh, I had a go at it and I have cocked it up a little bit so um, what I'll do is I'll throw up some pictures or I, I'll keep talking and I'll, I'll do some pictures and I'll sort of voice over it so um, it was pretty much um, uh, orange peeled God, my specs are steaming up. This is going to be interesting till I get moving. Um, it was pretty much orange peely. Um, predominantly due to painting in cold weather. Uh, and it was a bit flecked as well, so it doesn't look great. Um, but I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a go. I'll see what, see what I can rub back and I'll see what I can't. So, you know, if you've got orange peel, you've really got two approaches. You either go more on top or less by rubbing it down. So I thought I'd try for, you know, less by rubbing it down. Um, now, I could rub it down so far to give me some flat areas and some flex in it, but if I went much further, I would go through that paint. And that paint is really quite thick. That paintbrush really does chuck it down quite a lot. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I did burn across uh, one edge, and I thought, well, so I can pinstripe or I can do something to, to, to rectify that. But um, 
I wasn't happy and frankly that's a quite a regular shape when I was looking at the uh, longer um, rear panels that are quite curvy, lumpy and bumpy and well, I really wasn't looking forward to the experience of rubbing that down because I'd have to do it really carefully. I then sort of had a bit of a, uh, a consideration moment, you know, why, why had this happened? Temperatures, yes, paint gun set up, probably more than likely, and the bit that I realised was that I think, although I changed the um, uh, fan size, I think I hadn't adjusted how much paint was coming through, and it was chucking through a lot of paint, um, and potentially not enough pressure to push that paint around so it was blobbing on the actual surface which is why I've ended up with what I've got. So <coughs> realising what I've done I thought well I don't really want to do that again uh, on the other panels so I thought I'd try something different so I went to the mud guard which looked similar um, uh, in terms of orange peeling, um, lots of paint on it, well covered, oh no courage there, lots of paint on it, well covered <coughs> but I thought what I'd try is a lacquer over the top. Now, um, I'm back at work, work's busy, I don't have time to get the full air gun set up, but actually more importantly, from my limited um, uh, research, um, on a paint gun you have needle size, um, and the needle size affects how much paint's coming out at a time, and etc, etc. Now, because that's a, a cheapy freebie, thanks very much, mate, um, it's 0.15 size uh, needle, or jet needle on the end. Um, now to paint lacquer, everything that I've seen, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody that knows better, um, suggests 0.2 or 0.3 for lacquer. So fundamentally, I don't have the right setup to paint lacquer brackets yet. Uh, what I did have, excuse me, <coughs> What I did have knocking around was a can of um, can brush paints, which uh, anybody that's watched this site for a while will know that I love. Um, can brush clear, which I have previously used as, as, as a lacquer. Um, uh, it doesn't say lacquer on the tin, but you know if you've got a clear spray paint, that's effectively what it is. Um, I've used it before. It goes on beautifully thick. Um, uh, with minimal running, if you do it properly. Um, and uh, I thought I'll give that a go. So that's what I've done to the mudguard. And I have put a cam brush lacquer layer across it. Now, uh, I did it yesterday, jammed in the back of a, uh, a tiny cupboard uh, outside. Um, uh, and the weather was pretty shitty. And consequently, it's done an okay job. But I've got a few runs to sort out, which don't really... Uh, mini runs, I suppose, to sort out, which don't really bother me. But... Um, you know, I'll chuck up a few pictures, or in fact I've probably already chucked up a few pictures at the bottom whilst, uh, whilst I talk through that. Um, so what? Um, next job, probably tonight, and I think I'll try and squeeze it into this video, um, is to try and rub that back. And it's really experimenting. Uh, I'm experimenting as to how that looks against the, uh, uh, I don't know, naked cowl. Um, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, looking at it, it looks very similar to other stuff that I've, uh, that I've base coated, clear coated, and then rubbed down and got some nice, decent results out of it. Uh, consequently, I've also ordered a, uh, another couple of tins of um, can brush clear that should be here by the weekend. So, uh, what I should be in a position to do, oops, what I should be in a position to do is either follow on this video with um, uh, a bit of video of the end result of, uh, of rubbing down and polishing the front mud guard, um, or alternatively it'll be in the next one. So that's me as far as an update is concerned. Uh, I'm bringing on into work. Um, uh, it's 20 past 8. I'm a little bit late. Uh, but hey, uh, that is life. That'll do me. Catch you later on all. Cheers. Okay, so we are now back. Uh, the, uh, the moving shots was on the way to work. This is after work. Um, it's about half nine, knackered. Um, so we've got two bits of 
bodywork that have been through exactly the same process. You see the mud guard there on the left looking pretty damn good. You see the cowling there looking really quite sorry for itself, particularly on the ledge there that I've burnt. Um, so they've both been through the same process, uh, 1200 grit wet, 1200 grit wet, I'll try that again, it has been a long day, uh, 2000, 2500 then uh, compound um, over the top and then two polishes, one Meguiar's colour restorer and then just a turtle wax and uh, you can see the difference. Now bearing in mind that you know this, that's, that's my repair down the bottom there, you know, it's looking pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, it's not completely flat, but frankly, it's better than was, um, and it's gonna go back on the bike, uh, pretty much comme ça. Um, it is still a bit of a recovery, really, recovery option from um, from some dodgy spray painting. Um, but I'm learning, this is uh, how you get better is by practice. Right, that'll do me for now. I've got a couple of cans of gloss coming for this bad boy. Uh, for the rear two sections um, and I think I might just go for a, a can of uh, uh, matte, uh, wrong sorry, satin black um, strip the polish off that which is washing up liquid oils or something similar and then just bang a couple of coats uh, over the top uh, and then go for it with the uh, with the lacquer as well just to get a, a bit of a common, a common edge across the lot And there we go, that's chucked it on. Um, bike's all covered out the back at the moment, um, but I think that looks pretty good. I am happy with that. Uh, and actually the black ties in quite nicely, I think. Oh, it would have been nice to do it in the orange, but uh, yeah. Happy with that. That repair, what I'll do is I'll chuck on a, a screenshot um, from a previous upload as to what that looked like before and what it looks like now. In fact, I'll stick it up in a corner. Um, yeah, that. make a bit of room, there we go. Um, happy with that, happy with that. Right, that'll do me for another one. Um, thanks very much all, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Um, chuck a comment, chuck a like, chuck a calm. Cheers all, ta-da. <laughs>